Firefighter Bryce Carden was lowered from a ladder truck to the driver's side of the rig to reach the driver. And thanks to Firefighter Carden's efforts to rescue two to the Louisville Division of Fire, the driver was saved. I want to give a special thanks again to all of the firefighters who were on scene yesterday, everyone from EMS, from LMPD, to the 911 call dispatchers, to all first responders who played a role in this heroic rescue and addressing the needs of that accident. Earlier today, I also had an opportunity to speak with the driver who was rescued. She is incredibly brave. She is incredibly fortunate. We had the opportunity to share some prayers together, to share experiences about what it's like to have experienced a near-death experience. She is a very fortunate person. She is well aware of that, and I extended our thoughts and prayers to her as she continues to recover from this traumatic experience that she was so fortunate to have been rescued from. You can see in some of the pictures that we're sharing here today just how fortunate she is to still be with us and how fortunate we are that she is with us. I'm not releasing her name at this time out of respect for her privacy, uh, but we are very fortunate that we are where we are. I want to give a quick overview of the incident that occurred that led to the accident. I spoke with LMPD Chief Jacqueline Gwynne Villaroel earlier today, who gave me the preliminary investigation results that LMPD has conducted. According to witnesses, a vehicle was traveling south on the Clark Memorial Bridge when it struck a stalled vehicle that was in the right lane of the southbound vehicles. After impact, the driver of that vehicle lost control and crossed into the northbound lane where that vehicle struck the semi-truck, which was traveling north. That impact caused the semi-truck to travel after impact and resulted in the semi-truck going through the guardrail and then ultimately hanging off the bridge, as everyone has now seen. The investigation is still ongoing. This information that I've just provided is preliminary information, but we wanted to share that as soon as we can. Please note that there are no cameras on the bridge, so we do not have video of the accident. Fortunately, as we just talked about, the driver of the semi-truck was heroically rescued. Unfortunately, the other driver has suffered serious injuries and is still being treated at UofL Hospital. We will not share any more details out of respect for the individual and their family, but we are conveying our thoughts and wishing them a speedy and full recovery. And also, we are so thankful once again for the healthcare heroes at UofL Hospital and everywhere else that are here in our city to help people when they are in need. Next update relates to the bridge. Our incredible professionals at the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet have been on the scene at the Clark Memorial Bridge since just literally moments after this accident occurred and have been working around the clock to assess the damage and determine the next step forwards. Out of sheer happenstance, we are very fortunate that James Ballinger, the state highway engineer, who you will hear from in a moment, was just a few blocks away at the Galt House the moment this accident took place and was on the bridge it just quick enough to see the rescue occur and to get the investigation started analysis immediately. Additionally, a bridge engineer specialist was driving on I-64 and saw the semi-truck dangling over the bread, bridge, and he too was able to get to the Clark Memorial Bridge immediately. So we have literally had KYTC professionals on the bridge since moments after this accident occurred. Now please keep in mind, we are only just over 24 hours after this accident occurred, and so all of this again is coming together very rapidly in the most professional manner as possible with safety for everyone being the driving force and the motivating factor. So from the engineers who were right on the scene to their colleagues at KYTC, 
to Secretary Gray, Secretary of Transportation, Governor Bashir and his administration, Jefferson, Indiana, Mayor Mike Moore, our administration here in Louisville with Louisville Metro government. We have all been closely collaborating and working in nonstop contact since this accident occurred yesterday. We're staying in close contact, we're speaking regularly, and we all agree, as I mentioned, that safety has to come first. As I mentioned earlier, uh, James Ballinger and I and others just left the Second Street Bridge where we met on scene with the contractor who is going to be handling the repairs to talk about those next steps. And thanks to all of our colleagues' great work in Louisville Metro government and KYTC, the contractor's input and others, KYTC is prepared to reopen the Second Street Bridge by 6 p.m. this evening. However, both pedestrian sidewalks will remain closed for safety precautions. We're working quickly to ensure that all of the signage is up in place and that barriers are all installed as well. Please do not walk around the sign and barriers. As I mentioned, vehicular traffic will reopen by 6 p.m. today. Mr. Ballinger is gonna talk about more of those details, but pedestrians will not be permitted on either one of the sidewalks. Please do not walk around them. This is for your safety and the safety of the drivers. If you wanna walk across the Ohio River, please use the Big Four Bridge for the time being. There will be future impacts as well that we will have announcements on as we continue to move forward. And please remember that KYTC, Kentucky Transportation Cabinet, they are the experts on these matters. These are the same leaders who were nationally recognized for their th thorough, safe, and swift repairs to the Brent Spence Bridge in a record amount of time not too long ago. I have the full faith and trust in our KYTC colleagues. We ask that everyone please be patient so we can put safety first. So now for more specifics on what's happening and what's going, what, can, what is to be expected, I'm gonna ask James Ballinger, who's our state highway engineer, to come provide a few more details. James, thank you so much to you, Secretary Gray, to everyone at KYTC for the amazing professionalism and expertise you have brought to this situation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And uh, first of all, uh, let me thank everyone, uh, the, the city, first responders, and uh, everyone involved in this uh, uh, rescue and in the uh, response to date uh, for their partnership and the shared vision of safety, uh, because safety is the first thing in everything that we do. Uh, I also appreciate you, Mayor, for visiting the bridge firsthand today. Uh, earlier, just, a, just a, a few moments ago, we looked at the impacted area. And also thank you for meeting with our talented staff, though, that are out working on the, uh, the inspections and the assessment of the bridge. As I said earlier, safety is our top priority. And I appreciate all the engineers and the inspection team for being on scene. They responded swiftly to the incident. And, uh, and the main thing is we work to keep the public safe and protected. Um, I'd like to also uh, report that our team has completed a thorough examination of the bridge's superstructure. Uh, they've looked at it above and below the roadway deck. They've examined the structural steel, the damaged sidewalk, and uh, all the connecting supporting structure there. And so that inspection has been completed as of this morning. While there is damage that needs to be repaired, the assessment confirms that the bridge is safe for vehicular travel. The damages uh, have been found that they do not affect the bridge's structural integrity. While the safety of the bridge has been confirmed, I'm also happy to share again and reiterate what the mayor said though, that um, the three lanes, two lanes northbound, one lane southbound, will be able to be reopened to vehicular traffic this evening at 6 p.m. Our inspections also found that most of the damage was confined to the sidewalk structure, which is the supporting part that's only used for the pedestrians, not the vehicular traffic. Uh, this, is expected, this is not expected to be a long-term closure, and uh, we will provide more details 
as we have our repair plans and the, uh, the, the actual construction takes place. Again, I'd like to thank our inspection team, our engineers, cabinet leadership, all for the swift response to help keep the, the public safe and protected. Uh, one thing I'd like to talk a little bit about the detail, as the uh, first responders were removing the tractor trailer uh, from the bridge yesterday though, our crews, they staged staff, we staged equipment, inspectors, so that we could um, start the, uh, the inspections immediately. The inspectors, they were on the bridge last night. Of course, we had to, uh, to, to stop about 9 p.m. We resumed the inspections this morning and, uh, and completed, as I said earlier, uh, about noon today. And this is what our teams are trained for. They, 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 they train continually just for these situations. Um, I do appreciate their expertise and the, the dedication to protect the public. Again, safety, specifically ensuring our bridges like these are safe for drivers and pedestrians are our top priority. With that, I want to say, Mayor, that we are also thankful for the, he for the heroic recovery of the tractor trailer driver. Um, and we also want to continue to keep all the crash victims in our thoughts and prayers. Yesterday's incident was something that's extremely rare and unusual. This bridge has carried millions of vehicles during its lifetime. A quick review of the crash data indicates that we've had less than 20 roadway departures or other crashes of this type with the structure in the last five years. That's a time span when an estimated 40 million vehicles have crossed this bridge. Uh, one thing that we'll be doing next, though, is we'll continue to review the police reports and other information about the incident. Our engineers will also continue to examine short-term and long-term improvement opportunities as a part of an after-action review. This is something that we do anytime there's an accident of this type. We will continue to keep the, the public updated about these repairs. And um, with that, Mayor, I would like to thank you again for your partnership and the partnership of, uh, of Louisville Metro. Thank you. Thank you so much, James. Uh, again, thanks to everyone with KYTC for their incredible work just over this past 24 hours. We are going to continue working with urgency, all of us at KYTC, at Louisville Metro government, the contractors, everyone, but urgency with safety first. And so if we ask for continued patience, knowing that safety has to be the pro top priority. So if, for example, you're coming downtown tonight for the U of L game, or for another reason, to have a great dinner, or to enjoy all that downtown has to offer, please just allow yourself a little bit of extra time, make a plan for how you're gonna get to and from downtown. There will likely be delays so please plan ahead and be patient. Uh, we will continue to keep Louisville, Southern Indiana, and everybody informed as we continue to move forward with the recovery from this, uh, and as we continue to move forward with all the issues surrounding uh, the aftermath of this accident. So again, thank you all very much, and Mr. Ballinger and I are happy to take any questions from the media uh, at this time. Yeah, as Mr. Ballinger mentioned, uh, we believe, uh, based on the inspections, that the sidewalk is the area of damage. The roadway itself has no structural uh, damage. Uh, there is some paint that has been removed from that steel truss that you mentioned where you can see uh, the, how, how fortunate the driver is uh, to have survived uh, this accident. Uh, but, but we believe that the, uh, the impact is on, on the sidewalk, uh, which is going to be the repair. Again, we're going to continue to do to complete the investigation. Uh, right now, the information that I have is what I shared uh, with respect to the southbound driver. 
uh, that ran into a stalled car in the right lane of the, the southbound lanes and then careened over the line and hit the semi-truck that was coming northbound. We will continue to do further investigation. Regarding the sidewalk? Yes. Well, so what you will see when you go up there, I'm not sure if one of these pictures has it right now, there, there will be a significant, again, there, there are going to be two northbound lanes open, one southbound lane open. So one of the, the, there is a, a large barricade uh, around the area of where the accident occurred and where the truck uh, was dangling over the bridge. Uh, there, there, there are multiple barricades. There's a water-filled barricade. Uh, there's also a gated barricade that has been erected as well. Uh, so there are several barricades uh, to keep vehicles far away from that. Uh, and then again, we, no pedestrians should be on the bridge at this time. We, we don't need anyone else up there uh, you know, hanging around or, or just looking. Yes, the water traffic is back open on the Ohio River. We'll get back to you. Any other questions? I know you mentioned the victims earlier, pointing out why he's still in the hospital. Was there anything that you wanted to add on just the others? Are they out of the hospital by now? Uh, the, the, the one individual of the driver that initially struck the stalled vehicle is still in the hospital, uh, getting treatment for their injuries. Uh, to my knowledge, no one else is in the hospital. Thank you. Thank you all very much. We'll continue to keep you updated.